Welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe with Smoke and Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, I'm going to be grinding up an entire prime brisket. We're going to have ourselves some brisket burgers. Stay tuned. You can see, look at this bark. It's crazy. Oh man, this is perfect. It helps to start with a nice sharp knife, okay? Oh my goodness. Look at that. All right, let's get started on these brisket burgers. I want to introduce you to my newest gadget. This is my 1.5 horsepower meat grinder from the company Meat. And this is a beast. It weighs about 70 pounds. You can see it's really big. So I'm gonna disassemble it real quick because you need, to, you need to put these items in the freezer so they get nice and cold, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just take it apart real quick. It's got this wheel on the outside. Take the die out. This one right here. This piece also. Now you do have a Teflon washer that you need to take off. You don't need to put that in the freezer. And then the last thing I'm gonna take off is this horn right here. Now you could put the entire thing in your freezer as one unit, but I think it'll get colder if everything's separate, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in the freezer. All right, so we are starting with a 14 and a half pound brisket. This is a prime brisket. Now I did reach out to a couple of companies just to try to find out if I were to grind the entire brisket as you see it, what the fat content would be. And both of them told me about 80, 20, maybe 75, 15. Now, one thing that one uh, company did tell me is if I take the decal off, I'm closer to that 20% range. So that's what you want for burgers, an 80, 20. So I'm just gonna take this off. This is one of the very few times that I don't care what the brisket looks like because I will be chopping it up. So I'm just gonna, Put this decal aside here. And take most of that fat off. Okay. Now the only other parts that I'm gonna trim off are these pieces right here, these discolored pieces. Now that's not bad. You can grind it down. It's not, you know, anything bad. That's just part of the treatment process when they pack these briskets, okay? So also this edge right here, I'm gonna take that off. Just like that, I will not be using this. Okay, this side looks good. Now the only other piece that I think I'm gonna remove is this loose fat that's right here, okay? I don't like that. So I'm just gonna shave that down and expose that harder fat. That's it. So this is really loose fat, something I don't want on my burgers for sure, okay? Other than that, uh, maybe a little bit off of this fat just to remove these darker spots. And again, that's not anything bad. That's just part of the packaging when they do these briskets. They do put them, some people do it, I don't think it's a steam bath, but there's enzymes and stuff to treat the briskets, okay? So, let me see this little piece right here. Okay, that looks good to me. All right, so from this point, I'm just gonna cut the brisket into smaller pieces, okay? And I, I want these smaller pieces to be able to feed them through my grinder. So just gonna cut these one and a half inch steaks, if you will. All right, so I've got some smaller pieces of the brisket here. Just gonna cut these a little bit smaller. Just like that. Probably one and a half to two inch squares. Just to feed it again through the grinder. Okay, you can see the point right here, nicely marbled. Again, these are gonna be some really good burgers. So I'm gonna finish cubing the rest of this brisket up and I will bring you guys right back. All right, I've got my brisket cut up. Now it's time to assemble my meat grinder. I've already got this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this a horn. I'm not sure if this is called a horn, but it looks like a horn to me. And assemble the grinder assembly. Again, put your Teflon washer back in there. And 
There is a hole in the back. Just put it in there, it's got some gears. Now you also have this adapter right here. Make sure you put that on, it looks like a little ninja star. And I'm sure everything here has a name to it, but again, as I learn a little bit more about this grinder, I will learn the proper names, but this is my first time using it. So if you're a novice uh, meat grinder, this is the video for you. All right, put our wheel on right here. This is gonna lock the components in there. Now you can put a little bit of oil. I put some olive oil right here on these threads just to make it a little bit easier to thread in, okay? And just snug, there we go. All right, next we're gonna put this tray on the top of it. All right, let's get to grinding this meat. Now again, this is my first time using it, so I don't know what kind of noise this is gonna make, uh, if any. Now they do recommend that you do not start this uh, empty, so I'm just gonna put a couple of these chunks of brisket down into this hole, just like that. That should be good. And I'm also gonna put some on the top of this tray, just so I can feed them in there. Okay. I also have this really large bowl. It's gonna catch the ground beef or ground brisket, I should say. Just like that. That should be good. So I do have two options here. I can go forward or I can go reverse. So obviously we need to go forward to get the brisket to come out of the die out front. And I think we're ready to go. Let's give it a shot. Oh, not too loud. Oh, look at that. Now this brisket is ice cold. I had it in my freezer. And you know what, this grinds it really fast. I am liking this. Again, for not ever doing this before, it's going pretty smooth. I guess I should be using this instead of my fingers. It does have a guard so you don't grind your fingers off, but there you go. Just kind of push it down in there. All right, I'm gonna grind the rest of this up and we'll be right back. All right, so we got the brisket completely ground up and it is looking really good. I mean, this is really clean ground beef. It looks nothing like you would buy at the store. I think it's cleaner, obviously. You don't know what's going on in the meat market or these processing plants. So this is really clean uh, ground beef here. It's still really cold. It's a lot of ground beef. So some of this I am gonna make into burgers and some of it I'm gonna freeze in one pound containers. So if we wanna make chili or some hamburger helper or some tacos, uh, we have that one pound of meat uh, individually packed. So I did find this burger press right here. Not sure how well it's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a shot. But I do wanna weigh it out as well. I was thinking about making quarter pound hamburgers, which is four ounces of meat. And I think we prefer a one third of a pound. So that's gonna be about 5.2 ounces of burger. So I'm just gonna weigh it out. I'm not gonna smash it or anything like that. Let me turn it on here. Got my scale right here. All right, so that's five and five eighths. That's close enough for me. So I'm just gonna put it in this press right here and push down until it stops. All right, let's see if this little gadget works. So slide this piece off. Well, it looks like it's getting stuck a little bit. Yeah, it's getting stuck. You know, you can mold this into a burger patty, but I'm gonna cut me a piece of wax paper and see if that helps. I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so I washed the hamburger press all over again, and let's start from scratch again. So five and seven eighths, that's almost six ounces. There we go, five and a half ounces is good. So I'm gonna put a piece of wax paper on the bottom here. And see if this works. Put that in there just like that. Put another piece of wax paper on the top. And let's see if this works out better. Okay. Well, they came off super easy. Let's see how we did. So I got a cookie sheet right here with some wax paper. And 
that is the ticket. Got a beautiful one third of a pound meat patty. So I'm gonna make a few more patties and I'll bring you guys right back. Stay tuned. All right, so we've got the burgers made up and actually with the wax paper, this burger press works really well. We were able to make 24 third of a pound patties, so that's eight pounds of meat. And then I also vacuum sealed one pound packages and I've got four of these. So these are gonna go in my deep freeze. I'm also gonna be putting some of these meat patties in my deep freezer. I'm gonna vacuum seal these as well. So when we want burgers, we'll just take them out of the deep freezer, pop them on the grill, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna be cooking these burgers on my Yoda flat top. I'm gonna go fire it up. We'll see you guys outside. All right, so we're outside at my Yoder flat top. Now I did start the fire with one full basket, charcoal basket of Western brand charcoal. That's their lump charcoal. And then I also have half a basket of Kingsford blue in there and it's ashed over nice and red. I've got my burger patties right here. Just gonna throw them on there. And these are gonna be some really good burgers. Just like that, no seasoning or anything on them yet. Then I'm gonna hit them with some SPG. This is my homemade SPG over the top, just like that. And once we flip them, I will season the other side. All right, I've also got some cheddar cheese here. Once we flip them, get that nice and melted. We're also gonna to be toasting the hamburger buns I'll bring you guys back once I flip them. Stay tuned. All right, so it's only been a couple of minutes and you can tell these two patties right here already need to be flipped. You know, a fun little fact, I used to work at Dairy Queen and at McDonald's, so I'm well experienced when it comes to burgers. So when do you flip? You wanna flip when the blood starts to settle on the top and not any sooner than that, okay? So, let's see if the patty holds together, and it did. Go ahead and flip it. And you only want to flip your burger once, okay? So that's why you want to wait till the blood kind of settles on the top, just like that. Now these are not quite ready. Once they are, I'll flip them. Then I'm going to put some cheese. I'll bring you guys back once I put the cheese on, probably two minutes. All right, it's been a couple of minutes, so we're just going to put some cheese on these two patties here. Let that melt down. Actually, this one can use the cheese already as well. If you notice, I haven't even flipped those three on the right, and that's because the grill is running a little bit cooler on that side, so just be patient. Again, once that blood settles on the top, then you can go ahead and flip your burger. I'm also gonna toast the buns. I am using some sesame seed buns, which I absolutely love for burgers. So I'm just gonna put them on the cool side right here. So these burgers are ready. I'm gonna go ahead and pull them off. We'll see you guys inside and try out these brisket burgers. All right, our burgers are ready. I'm gonna show you how I like to prepare my burgers. So I've got my toasted buns here, my toasted sesame buns. And I'm gonna apply some Duke's mayo on both the bottom and the top. Just like this. Now I like mustard a little bit like this. Got some onions, gotta have onions. You know, I like lettuce and tomatoes, but if I just want a good backyard burger, this is how I like it, okay? Then we got our patties. Look at that. You know what, I'm gonna make myself a double. Let's do this right. Just like that, and that is it. Look at that good looking burger. Let's give it a taste. All right, our burger is ready. And before I dive into it, I do wanna mention that the leftover patties that we had that I said I was gonna vacuum seal, you wanna make sure you freeze those first. So I've got three trays of burger patties sitting in my deep freeze. Once they freeze over, I will take them out and vacuum seal them, then put them back in my deep freeze. So let's get to this burger. Look at this. This is gonna be so good. This is how I like my burgers. Mayo, mustard, onions, and cheese. That's it. Lettuce and tomatoes is good. But again, this is a brisket burger and I wanna taste that meat. So here we go. This is really good. You know, really juicy. You got juices all over the cutting board. Man, this is a good burger. Now, if you wanna cook your burgers medium rare, you can because again, you ground your own beef. I mean, this is brisket. Nothing better than brisket. Let's give it another shot. I'm gonna wash this down with a nice cold Lone Star beer. 
You know, I will never buy frozen meat patties from the store again. This is the way to do it. Grind your own beef at home. You know, with the price of ground beef today, it's cheaper to grind your own beef. You know, this brisket was $3.29 a pound. I think ground beef, the last time I bought it, was like $4.89 a pound for $80.20. That's really expensive. And you know what? This is really good. So juicy, really tender. This is the way to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will leave links in the description box for the knives that I use, the cutting boards that I use, and also my SPG mix ratio that I mentioned earlier. Hit that subscribe button if this is your first time here. Thanks for watching. Until next time, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. See ya.